talk about deductions. <clears throat> deductions have the same impact as adjustments. What they're going to do is they're going to reduce uh, the, in the total income. Deductions are subtracted, and deductions can be found on uh, F in the tax, in your course material. So deductions or subtractions from a taxpayer's AGI. First, you have the adjustments to arrive at AGI. But deductions will further reduce the income, and they are subtractions from a taxpayer's AGI. They reduce the amount of income that is taxed. Most taxpayers have a choice of taking a standard deduction or an itemized deduction. When taxpayers have a choice, they should use the type of deduction that results in the lower tax but tax lawyer is going to automatically uh, compute uh, the lower deduction, whether it's going to be standard deduction or itemized deductions. There are basically two deductions, a standard deduction and an itemized deduction. Now, the standard deduction every taxpayer gets within certain uh, qualifications. And for most taxpayers, it's a dollar amount, and it's based on their filing status, and they get an increase standard deduction if they're based on age, if they're over 60, 65 or older, or if they are blind. Those are the two instances when you can get an additional amount for the standard deduction. Now there are limitations on the standard deduction uh, for taxpayers who can be claimed as a dependent on someone else's tax return. But no worries, if you check that box that this person can be claimed as a dependent, or you check the box, I'm sorry, the taxpayer who is being claimed as a dependent checks it on their tax return, tax lawyer is going to automatically compute their standard deduction. The next deduction is itemized deductions. Well, let's go, let's talk about standard deductions. Well, no, let's go ahead and talk about itemized deductions too. Just an overview and then we'll get into them more, uh, a little bit more later. Itemized deductions have the same impact as standard deduction. It's reducing the AGI. We don't really spend a whole lot of time on itemized deductions. Uh, in this course because the standard deduction is so high. Uh, that happened about three, four tax years ago that most taxpayers can't itemize deductions uh, these days. You have to have a really, really lot of itemized deductions. And what I caution, um, as I said, tax lawyer is going to give the taxpayer the one that's most advantageous to them. But you as a tax preparer should not spend a whole lot of time inputting itemized deductions into the uh, software. That's going to be wasting your time and the taxpayer's time. You can just ballpark at what itemized deductions the taxpayer has, add them up. It doesn't equal to the standard deduction, and don't worry about inputting them. Okay? Yes. The only time I've seen people come and they want to itemize because especially older older people are used to itemizing. Nowadays, they almost never qualify. The two times I've seen them qualify last year were uh, people who gamble pretty much all year. And so they're up to like $3,000 and they're down like 20-something. So people, so those are... The, Usually the only times they qualify, they have gambling pretty much throughout the year, and so they add up to like 15,000, like you can ballpark it at around 15 to 18 or both those, and you itemize those. 
but it's all, it's literally never happened outside of those two times. Okay. And uh, it depends on um, homeowners. Sometimes homeowners are able to itemize deductions because of the taxes and interest that they pay. And in the past, we used to itemize every return because they only had to have donations and their their mortgage interest, and it blew the uh, standard deduction out of the water. Uh, now, because it's it's double, triple the market value, it's very simple for an, a person. It's easier for a taxpayer to just take the standard rate and not have to provide so much information in order to get a better tax rate on the So for most taxpayers, it'll just be the standard deduction. People who itemize, they come in knowing that they're itemized, and more times often than not, we'll take care of those taxpayers, but it's far in between. I think I've had only maybe one in the last two years. Yeah, and we're going to go into a little bit more what qualifies as the itemized deduction. And again, we're in, in the 4012 uh, under uh, tab F. <clears throat> okay, now I talked about standard deduction, and I said that uh, you get an additional amount uh, if you are over a certain age. But these are the standard deduction for most people. For single or married filing separate, which we don't do, the standard deduction is 13850 For married filing joint return or qualifying surviving spouse, it's 27700 And for head of household, it's 20800 You don't have to really worry about these numbers because tax lawyer is going to automatically compute it for you only if you were trying to determine whether a person should itemize or not. <clears throat> okay, now I said that you get an additional standard deduction if you're over 65 and, and or blind. And this is the chart that would let you know how much you get. And again, tax lawyer is gonna figure this out for you based on what you have input into the uh, tax return and what critical information from the intake form would tell tax layer that this person has a increased standard deduction. What piece of critical information from the intake form would let uh, the taxpayer or tax layer know that this person is going to get an increased standard deduction? Yes. Birthday. Absolutely. So you see why this form is so important. But these are the um, thresholds for a single, and if it's one, the standard deduction is 15700 So you see that's up from the uh, regular standard deduction. Two, 17550 Married filing jointly. Uh, there could be up to four additional uh, amounts if the taxpayer was married filing jointly, both were over 65, and both were blind. So that means that they would be entitled to four, and the maximum would be $33,700. So you see why it's almost impossible or most taxpayers aren't able to itemize because their itemized deductions are not going to <coughs> exceed those amounts. Okay. Here again, this is a worksheet, but you don't need to worry about that because tax player is going to automatically compute that for you. And again, if you can be claimed as a dependent on someone else's tax return, just know that the standard deduction is going to be reduced, but tax lawyer will do that for you. Okay, we talked about itemized deductions, and basically um, the itemized deductions that we will see will be medical expenses, uh, taxes, home mortgage interest, 
uh, gifts to charity and the certain miscellaneous deductions, the one that uh, Eloy was talking about for the gambling winnings, that would be considered as a miscellaneous deduction. Let's look at the course material because it goes into a little bit more detail. If you will look at um, page F-5, these are the probing questions that you would need to ask uh, the taxpayer to determine whether itemized deductions would be beneficial to them or not. And F-7, that's the screen that would show itemized deductions in tax layer. We don't spend a whole lot of time on medical expenses because if a person contributes or paid medical expenses, then they're going to have to reduce those expenses by 7.5% of their adjusted gross income. So if they paid uh, $10,000 in um, medical expenses and their income was $100,000, then $7,500 would be deducted from the $10,000. So okay, so they would be able, in that case, to take $3,000. $2,500, but if that amount had been $6,000 then that they paid, then the uh, floor, if you will, would have wiped out the deduction, okay? And page F-8, just for your information, talks about what, uh, what are medical expenses and what are not medical expenses. And F-9 uh, shows what it would look like in, as I said, in a tax layer. Okay, before we go to the qualified business uh, deduction, let's take a look at F-10 in your course book. This talks about taxes that you paid, there is a limit of $10,000 that you can take uh, for taxes, and that would be like real estate taxes that you paid on your primary residence or your second home. Um, interest, this is what uh, it would look like in tax layer on page F-10. Now, uh, sales tax, you can either deduct uh, a standard from the chart or you can actually calculate it. But tax layer, again, will take you through that and we're still not gonna spend a whole lot of time on that because 95% of the time, you'll never see this at a vita site. <laughs> Uh, F-12 talks about interest paid and the taxpayer gets a uh, form 1098 from uh, the mortgage company that will have the taxes that they paid, the interest that they paid, and you just uh, enter that into tax layer. One other thing that we want to talk about is uh, charitable contributions, and that's on F-14 uh, in your course book. This is what it would look like in uh, tax layer. Uh, it has to be to a qualified organization. It can't be more than 50% of your income, but here again, uh, tax layer would figure all of that out for you. Uh, the only one thing, mileage is considered um, if you're driving to a charitable uh, event, if you're volunteering, you can take your mileage. Um, if you have a non-cash contribution, it can be up to $500. If it's over $500, then there's another form you have to use. 
Question? Oh, okay. <clears throat> and then the other itemized deductions that we were talking about uh, on F-15, uh, if the taxpayer is itemizing deductions and they had gambling losses, that's where they would deduct it, but it's only up uh, to the amount of their winnings. So if they uh, won 5000 and they uh, spent 15000 then they're going to be limited to the 5000 as the uh, deduction. OK. Any other questions? This is another deduction that is in addition to the standard deduction and uh, itemized deduction. And here again, uh, tax layer will automatically uh, compute this deduction if applicable. But for tax years beginning after December 31st, 2017, and before January 1st, 2026, there is a deduction for pass-through businesses and sole proprietors are considered uh, pass-through businesses. A sole proprietor that reports a profit, again, you have to have a profit on the Schedule C, will be able to take up to 20% of the qualified business, we refer to it as QBI, as a deduction on the tax return. The calculations on Schedule C and Schedule SE are not affected by the deduction. Taxable income is not reduced below zero by 20% deduction, by the 20% deduction. And the 20% deduction is limited for higher income. Um, again, this is just informational. Tax lawyer is going to automatically compute this for you. Okay. Any questions? a little bit more information. Okay. Has to be the lesser of 20% of the qualified business income or 20% of the taxable income. Okay, let's go to a poll question. One thing that I uh, failed to tell you about the um, deduction, uh, the additional uh, standard deduction for being 65 or older, in order to get that uh, additional standard deduction, uh, if the taxpayer dies before they reach that age, then they won't get that standard deduction, that additional standard deduction. So say for instance, um, the taxpayer's birthday is in July, they die in February, they haven't reached the 65, so they would not be able to get the additional standard deduction. Roger is 64 and blind. Can he claim an additional deduction? How many says no? How many says yes? The yes have it. <laughs> because he is blind, age wouldn't impact here, but because he's blind, he would get that additional standard deduction. Okay. Folks online got it? And again, no worries. Once that blind indicator is indicated, and in, on the uh, intake form and is entered into tax layer, tax layer is going to automatically compute that additional standard deduction. Next question.
Letitia died in May, just before reaching her 65th birthday. Does she qualify as age 65? No. No, I just answered that for you, but because I had not given you that information, I want you to be sure that I, be sure that I brought it out. <clears throat> Very good. 